All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit off this time. I'm a bit congested at the moment. But anyways, Lake Mead, if you aren't aware, the largest reservoir in the U.S., the second largest being Lake Powell, and Lake Powell actually also in the same position as Lake Mead at the moment, in that these two only have a few years left. Note first that the water elevation in the U.S. lakes measurement system is measured by elevation feet. That is how high the surface of the water is above sea level, not the depth of the lake. So the surface of Lake Mead is currently at about 1,043 feet above sea level. It's not 1,043 feet deep. Back when it was full decades ago, Lake Mead would be up at about 1,225. And it's empty level, quote-unquote, because, you know, it's not a perfect flat bottom like a swimming pool. All the reservoirs are basically flooded canyons. But its bottom level is around 890, with the exception of the narrow river channel itself right behind the dam. And as of the moment, that 1,043 elevation feet translates into about 28% of its total water volume capacity remaining. And the elevation drop itself becomes greater and greater each time. Because remember, as I said, they're flooded canyons of different shapes and kinds. The reservoir gets more and more narrow the further down you go. And this year, during its decline phase, as most reservoirs have yearly or seasonal cycles that they go through over the course of the year. But anyways, in terms of its actual remaining volume storage, Lake Mead started this year's decline phase at about 34% and is now down to under 28%, heading towards 27. So it is on a continuous drop of around 6%, sometimes 7% per year. And obviously already being down to 28%, heading for 27%, some basic math should immediately tell you that does not equal much time remaining. And how much time is left also depends on what aspect you're looking at. Now the first level of not much time left is the aspect of their power generation. As to generate power, the water has to go through a gravity drop down through the turbines. So the intake level that leads to the turbines has to be some significant level above the actual bottom of the lake. And thus those intakes for the Hoover Dam holding back Lake Mead are not down at the lowest possible 890. They're up at about 950 elevation feet. And in terms of Lake Powell, that threshold was much closer. As for Lake Powell, they're set between 3,490 and 3,500 elevation feet. And as I said, at its lowest point this year, Lake Powell already got down to only 3,522. So while Lake Mead is still about 90 feet away from its turbine intakes, Lake Powell was almost down to only 20 feet away. Now once they drop below that turbine intake level, those turbine intakes are the primary outlets through which they are normally releasing water to the other side of the dam to continue flowing down the river. And they do have lower means to release water, just not in as great of a quantity, because the dams were built not under the expectation that the water level would actually ever drop that low. So the amount that they can release will decline greatly after passing below that level. And in terms of local water provision to their immediate area, for Lake Powell, that is indeed the middle of nowhere. For Lake Mead, it's the city of Las Vegas. In that particular regard, they can still suck water out of the lake until it's for the most part empty. But it's the first and second issues that are the big hitter. With the loss of power generation being much more catastrophic in Lake Mead's regard, because if Lake Mead goes, then Las Vegas essentially is done, and the loss of Las Vegas essentially will destroy Nevada's economy and will play its part into the mass internal migration issue that the U.S. is going to be facing. Have a separate video, I'll link above, discussing that. And then we hit the no longer able to release massive amounts of water issue, as despite seeming to only supply water to Las Vegas, and or the middle of nowhere. In reality, Lake Mead and Lake Powell are excess storage reservoirs whose purpose is to constantly release extra water to flow along the Colorado River whenever the river's flow would otherwise not be adequate enough, adequate for usage by agriculture and industry in Arizona, and particularly the bulk demand of it being to maintain the supply for the Colorado River aqueduct 
which is a network of pipelines hundreds of miles long that suck water out of the Colorado River along the Arizona-California border and pump it across Southern California, providing water for Southern California itself, Southern California agriculture, and the 18 million people of the Los Angeles area. So those two reservoirs lose their ability to release those kinds of amounts of water to keep the river flow adequate. That essentially collapses Arizona's agriculture, which is thankfully not critical basic food items like wheat and other grains. It is mostly vegetables. However, it is also cotton. Cotton being a very water-intensive crop that is for some reason being grown in the desert. And also that will restrict the amount of water able to be utilized by the many mines throughout Arizona. And also quite a few in Nevada as well. As Arizona and Nevada mine up a sizable chunk of the U.S.'s copper, gold, and silver output. So this will cause a massive output constraint for mines in Arizona and Nevada, thus the causing, most immediately felt by the U.S., but still on a global scale, a restriction in copper, gold, and silver supply, adding to their price surges, which are already going to be coming for quite a number of reasons. And pulling the rug out from California's agriculture, as California is already running into its own problems, its own reservoirs are not doing that great. California agriculture primarily consisting of fruits and vegetables, along with some other assorted stuff like almonds and walnuts, olives. That in particular is going to cause a issue and will have a cascading effect through other food items because apart from whatever you make at home using the olive oil yourself, quite a number of things that you buy from the store are made at whatever food processing plant they're made at with olive oil as well. Granted, the food industry can switch to other types of vegetable oil. However, that switch would not be immediate. Can California's agriculture be replaced or relocated? Yes, but definitely not immediately. That process will take a decade or two. But there is plenty of other agricultural space around the U.S. elsewhere with better water supply that could be used. Some of the most immediate options are replacing some of the massive amounts of land used to grow corn, as too much land is used to grow corn for the government, essentially. But it's because of the government requirement for gasoline to have 10-15% to 15 ethanol mixed into it, and or also replace some bit of the U.S.'s ranching land with farms to grow everything that was formerly being grown in California and Arizona. It could potentially result in a drastic reduction of U.S. beef exports, However, in terms of domestic at-home supply, even occupying enough former ranching land to replace California agriculture would still leave the U.S. with enough beef for its own domestic market. But again, I stress that whole process would take a decade or two at least, and that's just about everything for this. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. I have dozens and dozens of other episodes about all kinds of issues you can listen to if you want. PayPal and Patreon links are down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Go subscribe to my Catch channel for way less depressing content. We're also trying to get her up to 1,000 subs before November so she can get her channel monetized. But no matter what becomes of me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.